Hypothesis Testing – Spearman's Rank Correlation It was claimed by a journalist that teams that have more shots at goal also score more goals. We have data in this table where you have the teams along the top, the number of shots at goal and the number of goals scored. The first part is to calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient between these two variables. To calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient you must first rank the data. So always check to see if the data has already been ranked. This data has not been ranked. There are 10 data values here. So if I write down the numbers 1 to 10, these will be the ranks that we're going to use here to rank the data with. Every time I use a rank here, I will cross it off. OK, we're going to rank the data from the largest data value to the smallest data value. So the largest value here will take a rank of 1. The largest data value here is 116, that takes a rank of 1, so I've used 1, I've crossed it out down here. The next largest data value, 105, takes second rank there, rank 2. Next largest, OK, we have an issue here. We have two values which are both the same, which means we're going to use two ranks down here two values which are the same, so we have two ranks that we're going to use for these. Uh, this is a classical case of tied ranks. So what's the average of these ranks? Three and a half. So both of these values will take ranks three and a half each. At this stage we've now used three and four cross them both out. OK, the next largest data value, 90, that's rank 5, 77, rank 6, 74, rank 7, 69, rank 8, and then we have the same problem again. You have two values which are exactly the same, so you use the next two ranks here, take the average of these, which will be nine and a half, so nine and a half here, nine and a half here, we've used both of these. Now we, need, now we go on to the next row in the table and rank those values again starting from the largest for rank 1. OK, we have the number of goals scored, so we've got the data here, and we're going to work out the ranks for these goals scored. Uh, doing the ranks this time will be slightly easier, because the data is in order of size. So 19 is the largest, rank 1, rank 2, 3, four, five, six, and then we hit a problem. Tied ranks. There are three values which are all the same here, so the next three ranks are tied. The average of these three is eight. Okay, that's in the middle of all of this, that's eight. So these all take a rank of eight each. That's just a coincidence that the rank value and the data value is the same. It's just a coincidence. So these three have been used, and the last one will take rank 10. There we go. Now you have to put this data into your calculator. So what you're looking for is um, uh, mode 2, and then option 2, and you will have this table. So put in the ranks for the shots into column X. And then once you've done those, 
put the ranks for the goals into column Y. Once that's done, AC, Shift, 1, Regression, and what you're looking for here is the value R. Now you might think that R is the PMCC, but we're working out Spearman's rank correlation because we've entered ranked data into the calculator. When you take the value R from the calculator, it actually gives you the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So it's actually quite easy from here onwards. Put the data into the calculator in the X and Y table, press clear, shift 1, you want the regression options, and then R, and that value R will give you Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Okay, so the calculator in this example returns the value of 0 0.562 for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. The second part of the question is to carry out the hypothesis test using a 1% significance level. And we're looking for a positive association between the number of shots and goals scored. Spearman's rank and correlation coefficient is measured on a number line just like the PMCC. It goes from minus 1 to plus 1 with 0 in the centre. So that part's the same as uh, the PMCC. Um, the H0 and H1, on the other hand, are quite unique. H0, rank orders of shots and goals are independent. H1, rank orders of shots and goals are not independent. There is a positive association. We now go to the tables to get the critical value for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Table 9, page 31. For most hypothesis tests, if you come to the contents page, you will see the test by name here. And if the test isn't here by name, then it's probably the normal distribution or the binomial distribution that you're looking for. Okay, so for um, uh, Spearman's Rank Correlation, page 31, here, and determine if it's a one-tail or a two-tail test. We're doing a one-tail test, so that's the top row, at the 1% level of significance. The number of data values was 10, so 0 0.7333 is the critical value. Okay, so one tail, 1% 1 level of significance, N is 10, 0 0.7 triple three. Because we're looking for a positive association, I'm drawing this line on the right hand side, and 0 0.7333 is the critical value. If that line was on the left hand side, I would write minus 0 0.7333. Uh, you shade to the right. If that line again was on the left hand side, you would shade to the left of the line. The test statistic is what we calculated in the previous part, 0 0.562. And 0 0.562 on this number line is around here. And as you can see, that value does not fall in this critical region. The region that it falls in is where you accept H0. You only reject H0 in the critical region here. So the initial conclusion, accept H0. There is no significant evidence 
that rank orders of shots and goals independent. In other words, because we've accepted H0, we've said there's no evidence for H1. So no evidence for all of this. Everything that's written here for H1, there's no evidence for this. Okay, so there's no evidence that the rank orders of shots and goals are not independent. There's no evidence of a positive association. What type of error could have been made in this test? Well, if you look at the conclusion, we've accepted H0, so we could have made a type 2 error. And if a type 2 error had been made, then the correct conclusion to have come to would have been to reject H0. You will not be asked to calculate the probability of a type 2 error in the exam. That's beyond the scope of your course.